welcome back to the Roker Report, where I'm joined by my illustrious guests, Gav, Walshy, Callum, Jim, and James. How are you lads doing? Fantastic. Yes, very good. Awesome. Very today. well. Oh, look at Brilliant. that. Isn't, isn't that interesting? I wonder why everyone would be so happy. Why don't you fill us in, Callum? What's going on? The tenure of David Moyes has uh, come to a close, and oh. it feels Woo! it feels so good. Get it in. <laughs> Clap it in. Clap it in. <laughs> yes. Yes. The time we've all been waiting for. So, no one really expected this, so I'll be honest, we were all sitting down, we had something completely different planned for the show, but uh, this was dropped on us about half an hour before we started recording, so obviously that supersedes all else. So for the next hour or so, we'll be talking about how fantastic this is and what it really means for the club. Yes, David Moyes has walked away. Uh, he resigned of his own accord, from all accounts. Maybe he was pushed out, I don't know, but according to the actual statement, he just resigned and walked away with no compensation. Callum, what do you make of the whole thing? Is this fantastic news or what? It's it's uh, it's brilliant news. Um, I'm I'm not his biggest fan at all. That's an understatement, and um, and I think it's it's the only the only uh, bad thing is that it hasn't come sooner. And by sooner, I mean sort of November. Um, I, I just I, I think um, we've you know there are still a lot of problems at the club, obviously, but uh, that he he was one of the problems, and there's no getting around that. Um, it's it's one less problem for us to have to worry about next season, and we can go out and we can get the right manager. Uh, we can, you know, what I want is for us to be up front and say, look, this is the budget, this is the situation. Um, are you willing to work under those conditions? And if they say yes, then you're right. Okay, well, that, let's go. And if they say no, then move on. Um, that's, you know, David Moyes, all this season has been unwilling to work to the conditions uh, that are in place and the conditions are the conditions and and uh and it's pointless having a manager at the helm who is going to whine and moan and quite frankly um almost look like he's not willing to actually try until conditions change and you know a lot of the stuff about well i can sign some players but they're not going to make a difference and all that sort of stuff it was just it was one of those things where you think the, the, what the manager should be doing is saying, well, this is what I've got, so I'm going to go and get better from what I've got. And if he doesn't like the players, some of the players, he can phase them out and he can bring his his regime in gradually, but he didn't want to do that. And and this season has been an account of, uh, of, of a manager who has been unwilling to uh, deal with the reality of the situation as he found it and has instead decided to wait until things become more to his liking. And mm. for me... That's not the way that a manager should work. A manager should encounter the problems that he has and deal with them and deal with the squad he's got instead of wishing that he's got a different one. And so, for me, we've still got lots of problems, but Moyes was, uh, for me, a, a massive, massive problem, a huge obstacle. And if the budget is going to be as small as, as, it, as we're led to believe, then that just makes David Moyes' departure all the reason uh, to be celebrated because um, he he would not have done well on a budget and he would not have liked working on the budget and ultimately we need a manager who wants to be here so I'm elated happy I've got beer in the house um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great night yeah you're happier than you sound initially it's difficult for you to sound too happy but <laughs> you're getting there slowly as it sinks in wait well, we, yes. we've just been relegated that, that's true so. that's true but let's not focus on that Gav what about you mate how are you feeling uh, I, my emotions are all over the place at the minute. I've, <laughs> I've I'm, I'm, on one hand, I'm really happy that he's gone because it's something I've wanted for God knows how long now. Mm. But on the other hand, the implications of why he left do kind of make us, uh, or make me at least, a little bit apprehensive about what's to come. Mm. Um, I do, I do agree with pretty much everything Callum just said there. He's he's been spotting about Moyes all year and mm. uh, don't mean to blow smoke up his arse but you know, he's he's he, he called it early doors. Not time to listen to him and uh, he was he was proven pretty much right throughout. So, you know, it's not nice when your club's been relegated, your manager leaves generally because obviously it, it represents a bad time at the club. David Moyes to me represents arguably the worst period um since I started supporting Son and you know 25 years ago, mm. uh, you know we've had worse teams and we've definitely um, 
had bleak looking times, but just the the way that we failed this year is yeah. is just been you know absolutely terrible. So for me, it's it's uh, it, it signifies a, a, a huge change at the club. We've, we've now got the summer to look forward to, and, and we all we already knew that the championship was coming. We now have obviously we all we now we now have to look forward to that with somebody else in charge, which. Majority of fans obviously were ex- would favour. At the same time, the result of the talks with Alice Shaw were obviously not good, which kind of makes me worry about about just how bad things are. Um, I know, I know, uh, James Hunter from the Chronicle, big proponent of David Moy, a big fan of his. He's he's been he's been by his side throughout the season when everybody else seemingly wasn't. Uh, he's he's wrote something tonight in in. You know the shadow of what's gone on, talking about how he's been led to believe that there is no budget for whoever comes in, which, you know, in championship terms probably is fairly regular for most teams who finish twelfth and below. Mm. Uh, that that we were certainly expecting that that would be the case because you know the financial issues within Sunderland have definitely been made light of. Any any money, any money we make from selling players now is probably going to go back in to the club to re- be reinvested if there is it'll be very little and that obviously tells us quite a lot about what the next manager is going to have to work with so I'm I'm expecting a lot of transfers a lot of loans a lot of wheel and dealing but but being a fairly big word here yeah, that it's not impossible to succeed on that budget we've seen we've seen small clubs in the championship do very well with that sort of budget this season already and it, there's nothing there's nothing to say that bringing in a manager who is ambitious and is willing to work within those restrictions, there's nothing to say that they won't do well here. Obviously, the big issue for me is fan expectation then has to drop to that level to, as a fan base. Accept that it's not going to be easy. We have to accept that the new manager coming in isn't going to have stuff to work with. We have to accept that Ellis Shaw doing this, maybe telling David Moyes about his budget issues, uh, probably tells us he's going nowhere, which, you know... Is is another thing entirely, but whoever comes in is going to have a tough job, and we just have to be behind them now. It's not it's not a case of obviously David Moyes' issues were there all sit for all to see, and and he lost the support of everyone pretty much, you know, within the fields of being here. The new guy has to then, you know, we have to embrace whatever he's taken on, accept that it's a hard job, and get behind him, get behind the players because. I think a big part of Ellis Short maybe not agreeing to give David Moyes the size of the budget which he perhaps wanted, I think a lot of that to do with the fact that Short knew how much David Moyes had fell out with the players. Maybe players at the club weren't ready to move on because they knew we weren't going to move, make any money from them. And knowing how many gaps in the squad could be, maybe looking at it and thinking, you know, with the, the amount of changes David Moyes wants to make because he's alienated so many of the players, it's probably not worth sanctioning the size of change that he wants. Another manager could come in and could work wonders with a player like Darren Gibson, who's looked awful since he came here. Another manager could come in and, you know, look at the likes of Glyndon Gooch and mm. even Wabi Kasri and look at players like that and think, is the more that we could get from them next season? Because is it really worth selling them? That that's that's the key thing here. Did Ellis Shaw make this that make decision based on, you know, that set of principles? Obviously, time will tell. We'll see. We'll see who comes in. If it's a, if it's an uninspiring choice as manager, then we know exactly what to expect. But really, that you know, I don't think short a mug. I don't think that Martin Baines a mug. I do think that they've made bad decisions. However, I do think that th- this next choice has to be perfect. If the, we, we can't go out and get a journeyman. We can't go out and get a McLaren. We can't go out and get a an Alan Pardew. These managers that are available, we, we've got to look at what this club needs long term. Is somebody who wants to build things on a budget, who sees it as an opportunity. It can't be somebody who's just going to come here and, and, and you know, only touch the sides and, and moan like this for such a long time. It has to be right, and obviously they know that. So, you know, more, the more, probably the most important decision of the summer is the manager, not the playing staff, the manager. Well, I mean, it's, I, I agree with you on most of that. I mean, it's, I think it's fair to say for all of us that we'd have rather he left do you know what I mean? When there was a transfer window left, or even when there was like a dozen games, something like that, just so that there was something more to work with, so that he could have, or whoever the new manager is, could have put that sort of 
redirected that effort into uh, staying in the Premier League, which would have been better for us all in the long run, I think. But um, move, talking about what you said there about the budget, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit James with this one. Like, it was said when Moyes came in that he didn't have anything to work with. And when Allardyce went in, it was said, Moyes, like, that's what we heard, we heard that a lot, there's nothing. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you're lucky, five, six million was being bandied around, do you know what I mean? And then you're going to be working off loans. Yes, this this one's for for James. Like, what do you reckon of of this idea that there'll be no budget to work with? Do you think that's true, or are we are we going to pull twenty million out of our ass because the new manager says so? I, there has to be something there to attract the right candidate. I think that's that's really key. Um, we need someone who's you know young and hungry and, and really adaptable. Someone who can say mould the current squad we have um, someone that can fit the fans expectations and also manage the, the few resources he does have at his disposal that's that's what we will need um, I think it's really key that Ellis backs whoever comes in um, we are let's not be mistaken, we're a big draw Sunderland Football Club is still a big draw but managers are going to be hesitant I think to come to Sunderland purely because of our recent history you know, we, we've we've sacked managers more often than not. Um, mm. So, in order to attract the right caliber of manager, I think they will need some funds to work with. And Moyes leaving is something we've all clamoured for. Um, you know, he's he's been absolutely dire this season. Um, Callum said it earlier. We've got rid of a massive problem. He, Moyes wasn't the man he'd back. We've said it for months. Um, it was clear to see that he lost the dressing room. Um, I, I think he lost the dressing room to an extent that I've genuinely never seen before. I thought the last three months in particular have been absolutely appalling. Mm. I mean, the players have literally just down tools. You, it's plain to see that they did, did not want to play for that man. Mm. So getting a manager in who, as I said before, is, is adaptable and is you know flexible with what the resources he will have at his disposal, you know, he... he Anyone who comes here isn't going to think they're going to get 80 million to spend like Rafa Benitez and take us straight back up. Mm -hmm. They're going to know they're going to have to work on a budget, but it's about how they use that budget. Ellis will need to put his hand in his pocket. It, it's guaranteed. He, he really will, because if he doesn't, we'll end up with another journeyman, I think, someone for a payday. We want, if we want to attract the right calibre, I really think he's going to have to give him at least 20, 30 million to spend. Um, whether he will or not, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Mm. I mean, that's interesting about how much money we're talking about. How much money we'll actually get better short? You say whether he's willing to dip into his pocket or not. I mean, that's as I said previously. That seems to be a running theme for us, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Every transfer window, every season. Ah, oh, well, he's saying he's got no money, but he's going to have to dip into it. I mean, what really concerns me is that this, this is like the fifth manager now who will come out and attest. It might be the sixth actually. In, in quick succession, they will come out and attest that there wasn't enough money to do the job that they intended to do. So one can only assume that in the in the coming weeks or months, what we'll receive from David is some sort of tell-all to a local news or a national newspaper or Sky Sports interview or something like that. Or it'll just get leaked out that he literally didn't have it. He was promised things that he couldn't, that, that Ellis Short couldn't provide. Do you know what I mean? That's something that really bothers me and really concerns me. And I think it's it's um, it's indicative of the the problem we have with our owner. That, I mean, this is this is like sheer law of averages here. Do you know what I mean? This is statistically and mathematically obvious. Now we're at a point where every manager that comes in gets promised a war chest, and they come out with all these grand schemes and ideas about how we'll end up. You know what I mean? Get into mid table in the Premier League, and that's what we need: stability. Do you know what I mean? But it never happens. It, it, the wheels come off, and then a couple of months, everyone's slagging off Ellis Shaw. Now that's a it's a pretty common factor here, do you know what I mean? There's a pattern, I think, that we're all seeing. But before we get to it, I won't, I won't rant too much about that. Well, she, how are you feeling today, mate? Are you feeling good about all this? Well, I, I was feeling absolutely awful during the day. And then this lovely bit of news at uh, half past four, like I put a spring in my step, forgot all about my hangover, mm -hmm. how, much yesterday, how much yesterday cost me. Um, yeah, it's it's been really nice. Um, glad he's gone, obviously. There's no way he'd be able to do the summer. And well, I was gonna. Well, I had a piece wrote, uh, ready to go about um, about the the just the immense stress or like the pressure he'd be under going into next season. Um, so so we, did, we didn't have a good summer or anything, but you you would just be on the back foot straight away if say we lost to Brentford at home on the first game. Mm. But thankfully that that won't that won't happen. And now that this like horrible 
cloud that's been over us has seemed to be lifted. We're going into the summer now with a bit like just positivity rather than just just like more hatred or just this bubbling sense of unhappiness and people are even saying now who who weren't going to who weren't going to renew the season ticket and now thinking oh well I might now or I will now because there's there's some hope that whoever comes in it's going to be a little different and it's just it's that that feeling of the unknown which is again it's it's like exciting again um so yeah it's it's been Really, it's been really nice, but he was finished. Well, he was been finished for ages. I, personally, I think he should have gone the, the second we got relegated. Um, there was no point of playing these dead rubbers be, with him in charge. I just didn't feel that. I, I don't know what he was, but like, I don't think he had this like coherent strategy of what we were going to do in the championship. Especially if he he would have known that we probably didn't have much money. And look, yesterday was just the final. <laughs> The, the whole business with John Terry was one of the most sickening things I've ever seen or experienced at a football match. And the fact, the fact that we, our proud club, went along with this charade, which just says everything about this, this man. He's a coward. He's an utter loser. And I'm so happy he's gone. Uh. We, we have got, you know, Gav's touched on it, that there is this this underlying sense of the, the money issue and all that, but I just don't want to bring this buzz down because I'm so happy he's gone. It's fantastic news, isn't it? <laughs> Jimmy, I mean, what do you make of it all? Do you think that we're in trouble now? I, I'm very happy he's gone, very relieved he's gone, but the overall overarching problems of Sunderland, I can't take my mind off them. I mean, mm-hmm. it's one of those where he was making bad decisions. He'd shown no ability to deal with the transfer window. I hated his Britishness comments and it's relief it's a real relief to see a coach who just wasn't coaching attacking football at all well. He wasn't making good decisions in muscle games is gone. But I just look at the need for an overhaul of the structure of the club, the need to get rid of this short termist rotten footballing culture we've created and it's just a case of, well what now? What I'd love to see happen is we move forward with the recruitment instructions we've been getting from new people who've come in. We move forward with Wilson. We tie up the contracts. We look at moving ahead with some transfer targets that have been identified. We push forward with the new analytics team, and we try and create a new structure. Whoever the new coach is that's coming in, they shouldn't be signing the players for us. It's time for us to modernise the football club, to try and, for want of a better phrase and um, do a bit more of a Southampton approach to signing players to move on to modernise the club and just make a real effort to, to, to modernise and, and move forward because alright Moyes is gone and that's great but there's still so much more to be done and so much more we have to do to to reorganise here and to, and to move forward so it's a great start I'm really happy he's gone. Let's find a way to be a modern football club. Let's find a way to get an on-pitch identity. And let's try and create a structure that means in five years' time, whether in the Championship or Premier League, we've got an on-pitch product that we can have as football fans. Fair enough. I mean, I, I completely agree with that. That's something, something to look forward to. I mean, before we go any more into exactly what's happened with Moyes and, and specifically what this news from today holds for us, I mean, it won't have escaped most of your notice that we lost 5-1 to Chelsea in the final game. Season. Yes, the end of the season has finally arrived, so that was fantastic in a way, not really. Uh, during that match, on the 26th minute, I believe it was, John Terry was given, uh, we kicked the ball out at David Moyes' uh, behest. He, they allowed his team to do this, obviously at request of Chelsea, and uh, they were allowed to give him an honour guard and... You know what I mean? Have this little miniature party right in the middle of a game, and that's really wound up a lot of people. I can understand why the fans would be agitated about that. For me, I can completely see that it makes us look a bit ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's it's sort of like these fans travelled a long way to to be taken seriously, maybe one last time in the Premier League, and that's obviously might feel fucking stupid, really, hasn't it? Do you know what I mean? You spend all that money, you expect to be taken seriously, but. From the Chelsea fans' perspective, oh, it means nothing. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a nothing game. So I, I can see why they're upset. At the same time, it was a nothing game. Do you know what I mean? There was nothing to it. There was a, it. It meant nothing to Chelsea. It meant nothing to us. 
but I still I think it was disrespectful to the fans more than anything else I don't, I don't think the, the outcome would have been affected regardless or anything like that but it's just again it's indicative of David Moyes and the sort of spineless person he is as as was just mentioned by uh, by Jimmy so it's a really difficult situation now because as I say we, we had all this all these things planned but we've got such a such potential now to talk about exactly where we would go so just briefly if, if we can just stick to it really briefly do we have any ideas about the sort of manager that would be readily available to us now I mean I'm going to hit Callum up with this Callum do we have any sort of ideas don't say Gary Rowett of who we can bring in <laughs> <laughs> or say if you get uh, um I mean, I'm inclined to believe that what will happen is that we'll be scouring the free markets for a man who is unattached. I'm inclined to believe that's what will happen because that's what's happened. Uh, I don't know how many of the last appointments. I think probably back to um, Martin O'Neill. I don't think Martin O'Neill was attached, was he? So, um, so I think all the way back to them, we've sort of got Poyet and Decanio, you know. Um, uh, Advocate and, uh, and Allardyce and then Moyes and, and so it, there is a pattern definitely of sort of uh, cheap um, free agent managers but I think kind of, what I've seen this season is a real kind of basic misunderstanding of exactly what a manager can and should do um, we seem to a lot of people seem to think that a manager um, like if, if a manager comes in and changes a performance and changes a squad and invigorates it, we quite go, wow, that manager's done a great job, like what Marco Silva's done, right? Yeah. But if a manager comes in and, say, and, and decimates the squad, the squad looks flat, they look like they can't be bothered, they look like they don't like each other, play, they're faking injuries apparently. You know, we, we say, oh, well, the players are, are just spineless, they're entitled, they don't care, Moyes can't do anything about that. And you think, well... Can he? Is, is it just me who thinks that is, that, is that not indicative of a culture that the managers maybe created? I mean, a lot of these are the same players who Allardyce had on song last season. And so I think we really need to in, emphasise the importance of how what a good manager can do to a squad, can football club. And I'd really like to see us be ambitious and say, right, who is it we want, within reason, obviously, and and say... Right, we want this person, and we're going to, and and I don't know how the structure can be, whether we can pay in instalments like you can with players. But I, obviously, I know we don't have a lot of cash. Up, if we could go to a club and say, we want your manager, we'll pay this much money, and, and instead of buying an at like a Paddy McNair or something like that, we buy a a, a good manager. You know, we buy a proper what um, hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we buy a proper hungry. Uh, manager with momentum who's who wants to forge a career for themselves and wants to basically um, do well with us so that they can move on to a, a, a bigger job than Sunderland perhaps and 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 I think sometimes we're a bit short sighted in terms of we spend money on players who won't really make a difference and and get a free manager who who can't make a difference either and we should be saying right well if we can't if we're gonna if we're gonna look for a manager let's look for one who can really lift the place and let's pay for it because a manager can 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 be so important and so I mean there's been a lot of names mentioned obviously we missed uh, we missed the boat on Gary Rowett um, which I'm pretty gutted about but um, I think he'll do really well in the championship next season um, I hope we batter and... Derby <laughs> I hope we batter Derby <laughs> oh we won't oh trust me we won't uh, Gary Rowett will take care of that but um, uh, yeah, I think, you know, you kind of itch at Fulham, Yapstam, Reading. You know, the, these these managers have all been mentioned. Um, I, 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 I'm not so interested in names or what their career was like as a player or even, you know, sort of being in the upper echelons of the championship. I'd, I, I'd like to to look, not just in England, look abroad and, and, uh, and find, you know, and interview people. Actually interview them and say, what are your plans? What are your ideas? How do you see this going? And and get a and see if they're right, you know. And, see what, and, see what uh, you mean about that. Can I, can I just ask yeah, you yeah. on that subject, though? With regards to that, you're saying that you want someone young, hungry. Is that not back to square one for a lot of people? Would a lot of us have been through and go, oh, right, this is where we are again? Um, I wouldn't say so. I mean, I... 
I think I've heard a lot of uh, comparisons made with sort of mm. we've been there before with like De Canio and Poyet. We've gone for the young, untested manager, yeah. but De Canio and Poyet were top players who um, who had big egos. And, and uh, you know, there's an old adage of really, you know, top players don't necessarily make good managers. Mm. And and I think that while they did well at their respective clubs, again, it was a kind of they're f- they're free. Did we really interview them? Did we put that much research into it? I, I would, I, you know, I would like to see us go for a manager who hasn't necessarily be played at the top level, but has some really interesting sort of managerial ideas and is and has worked on small budgets and and you know not not necessarily even promotion or or you know won cups or or anything like that. Someone who has stabilised the club, you know, who has changed the culture of a club, and and uh, and you know, I I think we're too hung up on people who are gaining promotion, who who won titles in their career, you know, in playing career. We've heard about Ryan Giggs being linked and and, you know, that's a sort of that's a sort of appointment that I think would be more like a De Canio, you know, someone who um who has that kind of big ego and would still kind of consider us and the players he was maybe managing as inferior to himself. Mm. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of, you know, really good players who maybe manage players and they're so frustrated that the players aren't as good as they were and, and or as good as the players that they used to play with, and so I I think that um, it should it should be an interview process. It should be focused on uh, whether someone can stabilise, lift the club, work on a budget, um, who's who's looking to go somewhere, who's really ambitious, who's and I'm not saying it's going to be easy to find, and I'm not saying it's a doddle, but I think that we need to get our priorities right this summer, and our priority has to be if necessary, paying for a manager who can do for us. That's my opinion. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree. I'd, you know, if they're serious about creating, like, a stable club, you know, this is all we hear, um, then they should really already have a list ready. You know, the likes of Southampton and the likes of these world-run clubs will have already had a list ready. They will have already be, be succession planning at all points, um, whether we have been or not, it, we, I guess we'll see. But for me, the you know the connection with the fans is is probably the most important thing. I think you look at what Roy Keane did. I think that was purely down management and motivation. Mm-hmm. You know, the club is in dire need of a feel good factor. You know, the manager, the next manager needs to see this as a step up. They need to want to be here. They need to see this as um, a club that you know they can really take forward they, as Callum mentioned they can't be pining after past glories or like, like David Moyes pining after you know I did this and that with Everton you know I had this kind of win percentage just you know shut up and get on with the job at hand we need a manager who you know really really wants to bring this this club forward um, poor managers and teams get promoted in this league you know it is hard don't get me wrong but if someone like Steve McLaren can perform and get promoted at championship level I'm sorry anyone can it's all about momentum and I think it's all about finding a man who you know the fans at the club can all get behind or someone who like inspires faith and positivity because we've had such an unbelievably dire few years um this the, we've mentioned it time and time again lads you know the the, the sense of apathy around the club we, we can't continue with that we need to have I want to be motivated as a fan to go to the football again mm-hmm. you know I want I want I can't wait for Saturday you know I, th- I want to see those lads get in for the club as the likes of what Roy Keane did for us so as long as they can find a candidate who as we've all said sees this as a step up sees this as his next big job and sees it as a real real opportunity you know it, it, it's it, it's really really key honestly the next few months are massive this is Ellis Short's probably final chance isn't it really you know he's made so many mistakes this man mm. he has to get this one right that he really does because you get this one wrong um and you know you, yeah, what, you're dead. I, was just, I was just thinking that what you get this one wrong <laughs> you're the owner what's anyone going to do about it <laughs> you know what I mean? he gets this yeah. one wrong and and oh, 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 well, we're still in the same fucking well. place aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> what about you Gav what are you making of it new manager to come in yeah I- to be honest, I think whoever comes in is actually in a decent position because he's replacing a man that was pretty much hated by us all. Yeah. And that you, you can't underestimate how important that is to a new manager. I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to be anything near on the same level, but you think of the Benitez effect at Newcastle. I mean, I, d- I don't think that 
the job he did there is as good as many would lead you to believe. But the point is, is that the fans loved him. The fans accepted what he did, mm. um, which gets you buys you a lot of time, especially when you lose games. And the man replacing David Moyes is going to have sort of well, he's going to have a similar sort of thing going on. But ultimately, he's replacing a manager who who most fans had given up on. So when you when you when you're walking into a job where it's pretty, you know, straightforward as to what is, you know, got to be done, yeah. the in the main whoever's taken the role on is going to um have to completely reinvent the fan base, which is the main thing. But in order to do that, you know, in order to do that it's 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 not actually that difficult. You just have to yeah. play a bit more attacking football and treat the job with a bit of risk. Fans will will take the it's not it's not that difficult because as we've seen with Moyes, um he showed us the wrong way to do it in every aspect. So whoever replaces him just has to kinda of look at that and go, Well, what did the fans really want from David Moyes? They wanted positivity, they wanted something to cling on to. They wanted to be able to see some semblance of a plan which was going to take us forward in the championship, even if we got relegated. So whoever whoever takes that job on, really all they've got to do is just kind of get back to basics and look at the playing squad and maybe think, is there more that I could get from these players that he was prepared to let go of? And if there is, then it, you know there's no reason why there can't be a success. This is it. I mean, I, I agree with that. I'm just sitting here thinking, like, what a fantastic and almost envious position to walk into. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's the going around that we haven't got any money and some players are unhappy and this has to be done, this has to be done. But at the end of the day, it feels like playing a video game. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've been playing this video game, you've been playing it on hard, you've been playing it on Iron Man mode. Do you know what I mean? You've been playing it for ages, for a year now, and you've been ragging yourself against the wall trying to get through this fucking level. But you can't do it. So you're like, oh, screw this. And rather turn the game off completely, you just switch to easy. And it must be like that for a manager walking in. All he has to do is win a few games. I mean, in order to do better, to, to do a better job than Moyes, he's actually got to win, like, what, 10 games? 10 games out of 40-odd do you know what I mean? In order to better his percentage already, but as you say, I mean, I mean, it would be brilliant anyway. But it's just, it's brilliant to have a change in the dressing room for those reasons that have been mentioned previously by you lads, and for many reasons. Like when there were rumours of of Defoe, you know, what I mean, faking his injury so he doesn't have to fucking he doesn't have to like come in for the last game and potentially he was there were rumours that he was a Bournemouth to his contract and things like that I don't know it's just you won't see that with a better manager you know what I mean I think man management is the way to go certainly I think that is that's exactly what people like Keane bring to a club and as you say Gav it's exactly what the fans need do you know what I mean but right moving swiftly on I suppose because we don't want to run out of too much time talking about how Mon although that would be fantastic is a great, I never thought I'd be spending my evening talking about this so it's better than what I had planned but looking ahead to the championship, I mean, obviously the playoffs are finished, so we know that the, uh, the roster is complete. Uh, some brilliant away days there. The sort of thing that you're looking forward to, maybe, Walshy. That's your thing, really, isn't it? You got anything in particular that you'd love to see from the championship? Um, I want Reading to go up. Uh, I have no appetite to go there. Um, but it's, the championship is much better because all the majority of them are all like Northern or Midlands ish so easy trips mean you don't have to get up at 5am for many games it's only there's only four and then then the Norwich and Norwich and Ipswich and then Cardiff and Bristol City and then but by that it's all it's all lovely northern post-industrial towns um Fulham is also one of my favorites because it's just really nice and I've never seen us lose there same with Derby um yeah, it's just going to be nice to see you somewhere else and just meet fans that aren't total pricks, like uh-huh. self self entitled, horrible people. You just went to Chelsea yesterday, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it'd be a nice change. I mean, hopefully we're going to these places and we can just like, if we get on a good run where we can just go down, and take the mick, and just par off some like Preston North End fans or that for will be will be the pricks. Will be the prick going down thinking we're the big I am and hopefully not getting slapped off like Barnsley or Brentford. But yeah, looking forward to it. That's the only that's the only thing that's got me through these these past dreadful months is that I get to go to somewhere a little different for a change. But on the flip side, we don't have this thirty pound cap, which is not good. So 
So we have it's the near the towns are nearer, but you like Leeds and Sheffield Wednesday are going to charge us like forty five quid. So swings and roundabouts. I just really want us to be competitive. That's the main thing that's running through my head. Watching us lose away to Middlesbrough, the second worst team in the league, and it looked like we played for ten hours without scoring a goal. That was really when I was like, "Oh my god, get us out of the Premier League. Anything would be better than this." get us out of the league. I would disagree slightly with the idea that somebody's walking into an ideal situation. We, we're going to need at least 10 to 15 new signings. It's going to need a clear overhaul to get us competitive. The budget's going to be small, so that's a really, really tough job. So unless the club can modernise and sort out recruitment and start thinking of things in a more modern way, get the ball rolling on that now, it is going to be very tough. And the other thing to remember as well is the last five times we've been in the championship, we've finished in the top six. So the expectations are going to be there. If we go 1-0 down at home to Barnsley, the crowd are going to be restless. If we're making so many changes, we could be looking at another legendarily poor start. So that's another thing to consider as well. So I do feel as if it's, it's still tough and it's still very, very important that we don't take the championship for granted. I think Blackburn were the ninth club with Premier League experience to go down to the cha- to League One and the Football League since we've come into the league. Since we went up to the Premier League, that's nine clubs that have gone down into League One. So it's going to be tough. We're going to have a complete overhaul. We're going to have to be very, very sensible. But I do feel as if as long as we can be competitive in 90% of the matches, not get blown over, look like scoring goals, have some shots and play some more attacking football, it's going to be a lot better than this. Because these last 10 years, oh my God, it's been a drag. Yeah, yes. Well, obviously, it's very rare that we get to record on the night of the sacking of one of the worst people on earth. So we should probably really try and uh, get as much out of this as we can. So... On the theme of what went wrong with David Moyes in his tenure, what did he do wrong? What do you make of it all, James? Where do you reckon he went so wrong? I, I think he got it wrong from, I, I think, the Middlesbrough game. I think, did he come out um, in the last week or so and he said, uh, someone asked him where where it all went wrong and he pretty much said, Middlesbrough, it's like the second game of the season, man. You know, his, his constant negativity and his, his attitude towards... What what felt like everyone around the club, you know, he he just seemed to have disdain to be at Sunderland. He didn't seem to embrace it in the same way other managers have. I think he got he's got the fans' backs up straight away. Um, uninspiring um, transfers in in the summer as well. I know he didn't have much time, but you know he could have done a lot better than the last Harry McNair and Donald Love. Um, it's just been it's just been a catalogue of errors. To pinpoint exactly where it went wrong is quite hard because I think other than that, what in November was it? Late October, November. Other than that, we've genuinely seen nothing all season. We've not seen a, a pattern of play. We've not seen a style. The only seem, uh, formation that seemed to work was was three at the back, which he stuck to for for one game, um, and then he went back to you know his usual. Um, meaningless tactics. Yes, he was had a squad that was, you know, riddled with injuries, but he just made so many mistakes. And his actually his refusal to own up to those mistakes, didn't he? He never once said, "Look, I've got that one wrong, lads." You know, I've learned from it. I'll move on. He just constantly, you know, passed the buck. He never. He just and the failure to, you know, accept any responsibility is just, for me, just completely unacceptable. I'm so, so glad to see the back of him. I was really, really, really um, nervous for next season with David Moyes in charge. I thought, I, c- I just cannot see us bouncing straight back. Um, I just I just hope we can get off to a good start. Thankfully, I think this next manager, as we've just said previously, um, will, 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 he will be able to build on what has been such an apathetic season quite easily. You know, everyone's glad to see the back of him. Yeah, I mean, for me, like you talked about the Borough uh, second game of the season. He said, oh, well, we're going to be in a relegation fight. And then when when we got relegated, I remember um, people were asking him about it. And he was like, oh, well, I was proven right. You know, and I think uh, James Hunter as well said, you know, I think it was on... Uh, uh, another po- I think it was on the Wise Men's Say podcast. He said, "Like, uh, 
um, oh, well, you know, he predicted it at the beginning of the season, you know, ultimately he's been proved right. And you're like, all right, well, brilliant. You know, after all, that's that's what we all wanted this season, isn't it? For David to be proven right. That's that's what we all want. I mean, it's not like we want a bit of hope or, you know, a bit of a bit of uh, ambition or anything like that. You know, we don't want... What what we want is literally for the atmosphere to be murdered and, and you know, for the club and the confidence and the buzz around the club just go in an instant. That's what we all want, after all. You know, it's it, for me, it was... It was just constant, um, you know, he was just covering his back all the time, constantly. Even when he first came in, he was just making sure that everyone knew the whole time that he wasn't to blame for this. And it was just repeated over and over and over again that um, that he hasn't got what he needs, he hasn't got the players, um, you know. And, and but, but at the same time, he... he alienated the players himself you know he was saying that the players weren't good enough and and obviously that's going to get back to the players and and, and it's no wonder the players looked like they didn't play for him like they weren't trying you know why it's just like why would they why would they want to play for someone like that mm. you know we lost he lost the fans in the second game of the season and it looked like not long after he lost the players and and the fact that he's been allowed to continue for the whole season really does baffle me because the financial aspect to it as well but, you know, the fans, even if he didn't lose the fans, I think everyone will accept that there was a kind of, even the people who wanted him to were kind of like, oh, no, it's all right, he's going to turn it around. It was like, a, oh, well, you know, we need to keep him because we've sacked too many managers. It was never like a sort of, no, he's definitely going to do it. He's definitely going to keep us up, and then it's going to be amazing. It was always like, well, you know, eventually it, it'll probably turn out all right, but we can't keep sacking managers, so will stick with him. And that was, you know, the fact that he lost the fans and he, and he killed the, the killed the buzz of the previous season so early and the, and then went on to alienate his best players. You know, he alienated Kasri, um, he, he alienated Van Arnholt. And, and I know that the players carry some blame and, and carry a lot of the blame for their own performances, but at the same time, the entire squad, even the ones that he's brought in on occasion have looked like you know, the, the ones who even owe their career to David Moyes have looked like they can't be bothered to play for David Moyes. That is that is an amazing uh, turnaround to sort of lose that many players and to alienate that many players from you. And so, for me, I just I, I just think that he's made the he's made everything worse for himself. He's 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 uh, he's covered his own back, so the 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 fans don't like him, the players don't like him, and he's come out with nonsense. And we've just been an absolute circus this season, and and I don't think it's it's all been intentional. I think, you know, he's he's just he just keeps saying the wrong things and 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 it'll up the wrong way. And and once he started down that road, it just made it impossible for him to reverse it. So I think it, it all went wrong very very early for him. It was think, definitely. I, I agree with that. I think it's it's obvious to see. Do you know what I mean? That he's he's always had his back up. As you say, it's, it's always been on the defensive. From the moment that he walked into the into the club, it was clear that he thought it was beneath him. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That he he was sort of having to defend his position as a manager by doing the, going into this task. Do you know what I mean? To this epic task to you know just buy a few players. <laughs> really, at the end of the day. But looking at Short and Short's involvement in this, I mean, is is the statement from Short that was posted on the on the Sunderland website <clears throat> in full. I pursued the services of David Moyes for a considerable period prior to his appointment last summer, which makes the announcement of his departure difficult for everyone concerned. Having worked tight throughout the campaign to avoid relegation from the Premier League, lies, David has chosen to leave the club without compensation, which is testament <laughs> to his character. It's not. In the days ahead, we will take some time for reflection and then focus on recruitment and pre-season as we prepare for our champion campaign. We wish David well in the future. Again, another lie. But I mean, that to me, I mean, it's it's nothing, isn't it? It's a nothing statement. It's it's a very, very basic. He's probably had it prepared for a while now. But every meeting, these or all of the last few meetings he's had with um, with Moyes himself, his uh, this is what now. This is the third manager that's resigned under Ellis Shaw, and as I said, I said previously, there's it will be the fifth or sixth manager soon enough. That comes out and says they're promising, and those promises weren't kept. I mean, 
is it possible it's been indicated that this might be or it might be an indicator that Ellis Shaw is staying on that he's been unable to successfully find the boat would you know bring that love and passion and everything to the club just like he does yeah um he hasn't found that and then we would have what another two three years to to look forward to under Ellis Shaw I mean Gav is that a good thing I, I know it's not a good thing I'm that's sarcastically is that a good thing more time under Shaw um, it's Ooh. just it's, it yeah up. I know it is isn't it it's like it, it sort of puts a downer on the whole thing that we know he's not going because it's case to me that he's not going that meeting today um, in London between him and him and Moyes and presumably Bain it obviously didn't go well and the fact that they're talking about budgets would, would suggest that for the time being, at least, he's given up on selling the club because nobody suitable has come in or nobody who meets what he believes is the asking price has come in. So <clears throat> I just I just find it I find it difficult to, to read that statement just to buy any of it, really. I mean, it's, it's all pre-prepared, pre-written. He probably didn't have a lot of say in what was put in there. He probably just okayed it after somebody else wrote it. Um in the days ahead, we will take some time for reflection and then focus on recruitment. Surely, when things were going tits up in like November, they, sh- they-, they should have had B for this. Like I know they were adamant that it uh, was going to work on their moys and that they were going to stick by them, but surely they-, they must have had some targets in mind. Sh- like even now, now the f- you know the fact of the matter after we know what's going to happen. Surely, even now that they have people in mind who they think, yeah, we wouldn't mind going in that direction, and I guess I guess it goes back to something that was said earlier. Southampton, for instance, they, regardless of who the manager is, who the players are that leave, they 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 have a structure in place which plans for that happening, and I, I just sort of hoped really that we would have done something similar when Bain came in and all these people who have been recruited over the last season. Um, maybe they maybe they have. I don't know, but I'm I'm just not I'm not entirely convinced that that's legit from mm. from Short and Martin Bain Martin Bain as well. I mean, I'm not sure if he's came out yet. I'm I'm presuming that over the next few days he will come out and sing. Um, I'm interested to find out what his stance on it is because he was very much in this with David Moyes. He was the one backing him when when things went to shit early season. And obviously is now Moyes is gone. Is it you know? fair to say that Moyes was more of uh, Bain's idea than it was Short's? Was that is that? Uh, I don't think. I, th- I think it was probably a joint effort. I think. Mm. I think when Short came out and said at the start of the season it was the man who he wanted for the last five appointments. Mm. You know, that's a pretty ringing indictment. Did us at the time was that we hadn't looked at what this club actually needed. Then mm. we'd looked at what Ellis Short had wanted in his head for a long time really what what we needed when when David Moyes came along wasn't wasn't David Moyes mm-hmm. it was somebody who was going to take on what Sam Allardyce had, had you know imparted on the club and 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 further it and even bring in players that Allardyce had kind of targeted himself you know the sort of Lamin Kone Wabi Kazri Jan Kirchhoff at the time seemed like great bits of business but I'm sure that had David Moyes been manager in that January, we wouldn't have signed any of those players because they're not his type of signing. So, the, whoever whoever replaced Allardyce had to be like him, really, because we were in a good place at that time. Very quickly, it became apparent that we weren't in a good place at all, really. And, and Moyes, the players that he bought, who are still here now, I mean, not one of them has improved us. And whoever comes next is now going to look at that playing squad. There's probably a vast majority of those players as well, I've got to remember, who are going to who are going to want to leave. Um, so whoever comes in, really, regardless of the fact that Moyes is gone, a lot of them players are going to want to be gone, They're probably you know, completely done with the club. Um, by all accounts, I know Mickey Gray alluded to it tonight, and it's been well spoken about that there was two players who went to Moyes and refused to play yesterday, yesterday against Chelsea. One of them was Coney. Um, I've been told that Kazri, I don't know that for definite, but um, those are two players that came in to the club at a time when we were in a bad situation and improved us, and Moyes has been able to really alienate them to the point where they're, they're refusing to play. Now I'm not I'm not excusing what they've done because I think that you know, they're both pieces of shit if that's the case, and deserve as fans a lot more than that. They, they should have the the courage to to at least honour their contract. But um, 
it does just show how badly managed we've been under David Moyes. And I think it was said earlier, but Ellis Short, Ellis Short's really on his last chance with the fans, isn't he? He's like, he's got, he's got to get this appointment right. And whoever they do have in mind, I'm, I'm hoping it's not, it's not somebody like Moyes who, who's just going to come here and, and because he's, they're out of work. Oh yeah, I'll take that job on, and, and not not really come in with a plan in mind. We need we need to really bring somebody in who's going to be here long term, but somebody who's got a plan in mind, who who knows what they want to do, who looks at that squad of players and looks at players like and looks at players you know like John O'Shea and Billy Jones and Donald Love and Paddy McNair and and Duncan Watmore maybe thinks there's something we can get from that. But I know the players what I can add around them, and I know what type of player we need. That that impression I didn't get from David Moyes. I, I presume that if he had stayed on as manager, we would have brought in a lot of players similar to the one he already brought in. Even when he said to us that he didn't think they were going to improve us, players like McNair and Love were his choices ultimately. And I think I think even if he had had money to spend, those things would be made because the, I think I think he viewed those as ones for the future. I do think McNair will be all right, but Donald Love, it, it looks a desperate signing at this stage, doesn't it? And, mm. You know that that player, regardless, is going to be here next season. And whoever is the manager has got to embrace what he's got. He's got to look at what he's got. And I'm going to I'm going to take this club forward with what I've got. I'm going to add to it. And so, what if the budget restrictions are in place? And, and I'm I'm got a lot to spend. There's players out there that I can pick up on loan. There's free transfers. Players would come to Sunderland and improve us, regardless of the fact that we don't have a ton of money to spend. We 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 can probably reel off a list, a list of names of lower league players now who although they're unfashionable, would probably come here and, and improve us and are of the right age and have probably got the right attitude to, to cope with the stress of the championship. Players we've suggested on the site, players like Marcus Madison, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. who for, for well, he's played in the lower leagues, but he's he's got pace, he's got skill, he's got goals in him. He makes makes chances for his teammates on League One. But that's the type of signing we should be looking at because ultimately he's a creative player with pace, which we don't have. So yeah, I'm rambling a bit, but regardless, I just think whoever whoever does replace David Moyes has got a tough job on. But it's not certainly not as tough as someone have, have you make out. I do think James Hunter was way off the mark with his mm. comments. Yeah, the budget's poor, but so what? Yeah, I think you touched on a good point there, Gab, in terms of recruitment, and that's really what I find most upsetting about the Moyes era, if we want to call it that, is that this was a guy who, going back to his mm-hmm. Everton days, had the nickname Diver and Dave, a guy that's been known for being uneasy in the transfer window, for not pulling quickly enough. We saw that when he was at Manchester United. So instantly, with so little time before the season started when he came in, that was a red flag for me. And I assume that was also a red flag for other people as well. And that was something that really short must have known when he was appointing this guy was that this is a guy who who's who's not the best in the transfer window and maybe he looked beyond that maybe he thought this is such a sure thing for the long term Mm. that he looked beyond maybe i'm giving him too much credit maybe he did that but to hire somebody that that wasn't suited for the situation he's going directly into was poor if he couldn't also pick up on the fact that this was a manager that's lost his courage nothing about ellis short gives me confidence going forward as to who he's going to pick next. I mean, it's it's that's that's really what hurts about the situation is that we sh- he should have known better. It should have been obvious from the interview that Moyes had lost his courage, if not just appointing someone who was always likely to replace Kabul to replace him via in the first place is really what it was bad at the time, and now with retrospect, just kills me. Is how badly he got it wrong. Fair enough. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty grim. I just want to. I just want to go back to what we were saying uh, again, like Gav said about Ellis Short, like he's got to get this, got to get it right this time. Do you know what I mean? But is it, what happens if he doesn't? Uh, can we really see what happens? What genuinely happens if, if Ellis Short gets it wrong again, which he probably will, do you know what I mean? Given his track record, him getting because uh, let's face it, uh, Sam Allardyce came along, that was the best chance we had for a while, do you know what I mean? And that it didn't see, it seemed like a, a, a really good match because. Allardyce wasn't the sort of person who was willing to take that sort of shit from short. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't willing to be lied to and told that, in fact, he wouldn't be able to spend it. He was more than happy to use his position at the club as leverage to walk away. But this one's for you, Callum. Like, 
what what can we actually do? What what does it matter if, if we kick off and we complain and we cry about Ellis Short getting the wrong again making the wrong appointment? What what can we do about it? Is there anything we can do? Uh, there's definitely things that that we can do. Whether it whether it actually impacts on uh, what what he wants to do, yeah, that's what is, is, an, is another matter. With pressure think, from the fans force anything force him out, for example. I. I I think he, it's well documented that he that he wants out and and he knows that he's not necessary. Well, that he's not run run the club in a, a responsible or good way in the last uh, is it eight years that he's been here. Um, I, I I don't think he's under any illusions about that. Judging from uh, from from what people are saying about him trying to find a buyer, so I think kind of asking him to go is is. Other. I think I think that. Um, while yes, he might. He's he, apparently he's turned down a few offers and, and things like that. And I, I know your views on that about him not necessarily being the best person to judge other people's intentions because of what a mess he's made himself. Like, uh, like you know, he's done a great job, and 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 someone else should really be judged by him. But uh, I think that there are definitely, for like example, Blackburn Rovers. They their owners have have well and truly run that club into a very very difficult and horrible situation and and uh and i think i i'm not averse to to ellis short taking his time and being picky about who buys us but I think, you know in terms of trying to force him out i don't think there's any real purpose that he'll sell when he sells and and i i'm interested in him selling to someone who isn't going to do what's happened to blackburn rovers so I think that if you if you really want him to to go, then it's a case of the usual sort of things: staying away from the club, uh, you know, giving up your tickets. When with with Moyes, I said uh, a, a few months ago now that I would not be going back until he's gone. Um, and and I didn't necessarily. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying for a moment that 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 would force him to go or or anything like that. But it, that is genuinely all I felt that I do. Um, to to feel like I'm not sitting there and 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 uh, and watching something that I just fundamentally thought was disgusting and uh, and and for me I didn't want to be the guy at the ground chanting making the atmosphere poisonous uh, you know ruining people's dead arguments if people didn't agree with me I think a football match should you shouldn't get should pissed gen- then, man, I'm yeah you know what you drink <laughs> I, you're right there uh, yeah, mouth absolutely. Absolutely. you've got a few yeah. <laughs> But I, no, I don't want to be that person. I don't. I don't want to be the person trying to start chants uh, and and bringing the atmosphere down. So I thought, well, this is something I felt passionately about, and so I I thought the best way to communicate that was to say I feel so strongly about this that I will give up uh, my pastime that I enjoy the most, which is supporting my team, and and uh, and you know that that I think like every like everyone else, it means a lot to me. So you have to know. You have to sort of respect the fact that that's something significant that people. I've been a lot of people who have been giving it up their season tickets and, and things like that. So um, I think that's the only thing that we really can do. But in terms of will it force them out any sooner, um, unless it's a real mass exodus, unless it's a sort of literally empty stadium sort of uh, thing, you know, like ten thousand less than ten thousand people in weeks and weeks on end. I think it, it won't really force them any quicker. I think we have to acknowledge the fact that ultimately. He has control of the club, and and he'll sell when he gets the best offer, in my opinion. Interesting. Well, I mean, I, I completely, <laughs> I would love to see something <laughs> alternative to that. I would love it to be a case of well, he gets it right, and we don't have to worry about it. Right, we're pretty much going oh, yeah, to it, guys. Yeah. But we've got one last thing. Gav's got one little conspiracy theory that he wants to <laughs> Gav, fire away, man. We're all about that here. Well, just just sitting watching Sky Sports News, like in the background while we're talking and Gordon Stratton's ugly ginger head appears on the TV and it kind of makes us wonder um, does David Moyes have the Scotland job on mind I know it was it was mooted at one point but um kind of makes you wonder they play England in a couple of weeks and if they lose that it pretty much knocks Scotland out of the race for qualification which you know would probably see Stratton sacked um, Moyes is a free transfer. Apparently, it's his dream job to manage his country. Um, 
surely you know he's he's seen the opportunity and mm. um it honestly wouldn't surprise me if the SFA had offered him a nice sign on fee so he could quit Sunderland and waive the compensation just to make it happen. Oh, um, that be yeah. just typical of Sunderland though, to lose two <laughs> managers to two international jobs. Isn't Dick advocate for the Holland job as well, wasn't that a thing? He is, oh. apparently, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. We, we, we really do know how to breed them here at Sunderland. We know how to train up managers so that they're, they're ready for that high-pressure international <laughs> job, do you know what I mean? The kingmakers. Just, just one more thing, just one more thing. <laughs> if, he, if David Moyes leaves Sunderland and gets his dream job, that's... That there's something wrong with this. <laughs> we should uh, all go work. I don't, you know, I don't, fall, I don't even, on his yeah. feet, no chance. <laughs> Hope he never gets a job ever again. Yeah. He goes home, he's left his fridge door open, so all his like food's gone a bit cold. Like, it's a bit cold. Yeah. Yeah. It's really bad, and it's mega like, oh, so what's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like really inconvenient things. <laughs> yeah, proper inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, guys. Well, that's about all we've got time for. Um, yeah, that's the way things are. I mean, I'm going to leave you with the final thought now. That's something that we want you to to take away from all of this. I mean, it's been a long journey. I remember uh, this time last year, actually, um, going to pre-season. I remember the optimism for it. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't entertain the idea of relegation at that point. It was, it was such an alien concept for me then. Especially, it was off the back of a, another fantastic uh, last ditch. You know what I mean? Attack on the breach that really the result in victory. Um, for me, then it was we were going to build on the we were going to build from strength. You know, under our dice, it all seemed good. It was he was a manager that I wanted. I mean, we flash forward now, uh, we're much poorer, we're much more disillusioned. Uh, we're really sore. I'm sore about it. Really, it's, the way it's happened this last season has been pretty fucking depressing. It isn't just isn't just the fact that we're relegated that kind of sucks but at the same time it's just football right so and it never really ends I don't really mind too much where, what league we're playing in as long as we don't get the piss taken out of us that's great but yeah the reality is that following the football club this particularly this football club it's it's about so much more than that fleeting glory you get from do you know what I mean the, a, a slightly higher table finish and things like that it's not about the cheap trophies it is and it remains about the community it remains about the family do you know what I mean? That spirit that's kept alive by what we share with each other, the, why we bother to spend our money and put all of our effort into watching this. Because as I say, at the end of the day, it's, it's just a game, but it mean, it feels like so much more than that. But long and short of it, rather than viewing this this is like the end of a 10-year stay in the best league in the world, it is the beginning of another journey, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't go with this whole... Um, you know, it's been worse before. It's 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 rhetoric for me. I, I take solace from the fact that we we do know that it has been worse before. I agree with that, but it isn't actually isn't a case of that. It's it, everything's relevant to how you feel. And while we have had worse results and we have had worse teams, and we have had worse managers. It has never been quite such a a smorgasbord of, of shit. Do you know what I mean? It's just been nonsensical this season. And for that, I'm glad to see the back of it. I mean, I'm personally looking forward to the championship. I think with a bit of luck, with the right guidance, which now we have the opportunity to get, um, build something that isn't temporary. You know, we can we can see Sunderland, which is a massive, a historic club. We can see it become an institution, which is what it deserves. It's no less than the fans deserve. It's no less than the city deserves. I think... It may take a few years, but and we may have to gut the clubs to do it. But we will be back. Do you know what I mean? When we will be a force to be reckoned with. I believe that. So um, thanks for listening to the Roker Report. Thanks to you guys and my colleagues for joining me. Uh, we look forward to sharing the ins and outs of the preseason with you in the near future. So don't forget you can subscribe on iTunes and Acast. Uh, we also have a new YouTube channel. You can use that. So be sure to visit it. There will be loads of videos up in the weeks and months to come. All the links are available on our website, www.rokerreport.com. And this is the report signing off.